Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. How are you guys doing? I mean, seriously, how are you guys doing? Are you enjoying this this beginning of the new year? The changes that are going to be coming with the government? Um, you know, what say you? So, I've been kind of laying low, been doing a few things, hanging out with some friends, uh, working on PC, as you guys saw in a previous video, and just changing up a few things here and there. So some of you guys have asked me in emails and in text messages, and you guys know who you are, uh, what has been going on with the ESP LTD Phoenix 1000 Deluxe Mach 1 guitar? Well, I just shipped that guitar out, let's see, on Wednesday. The reason being is the weather has been really shitty out here as far as temperature-wise goes, and I really don't believe in shipping out a guitar uh, in extreme cold temperatures, okay? Why? Well, you can have finish issues. There could be cracking in the finish. There could be uh, just overall problems. Now, I've received guitars that I've ordered brand new, uh, not off of eBay, but through uh, Z Zounds or Sweetwater, where I ended up having to send a guitar back, and I've ordered them when temperatures were really, really cold in Illinois. For some reason, like around the neck area where the headstock is and the nut, it seems the finish wants to crack in that area. Now, I don't know if that's just a finish crack or if that's through the wood a little bit or creating a problem. I don't know. Never really looked into it that far. Basically got a hold of Sweetwater or z Zounds and said, hey, this is what's going on, and showed them pictures. No questions asked. Returned it. Sent me out another one. So I really believe that extreme cold temperatures does affect a guitar in more than one way. And I'm not one who's going to kind of push it to find out if it's true or not. So I just shipped it. The weather out here, the extreme cold is kind of behind us. We're in now we're into like a little bit of, of rain going on, like what you would see between uh, April and May, you know, that type of rain. All the snow is pretty much melting, um, which is kind of nice because, uh, well, in a way it is, in a way it's not, because a lot of that rain and snow turned to ice, and we had some issues with that going on over the weekend and uh, last week. But nevertheless, this is what's going on with that guitar. I ended up uh, shipping it out to him, and this is what the owner had to say in email to me about that guitar. So yeah, it's just kind of a really a messed up thing to hold on to somebody's property for that long and not ship it to him since the last video that I made about that guitar. But like I said, you know, weather conditions and a few other things just wasn't making it work to ship that thing out to him right away. So yeah, it's out of my hands now into his and he's loving it which I'm really grateful and glad that he loves that guitar and it played the way he wants it to play so that's the end of the guitar portion of this video uh, if you're not going to be interested in the next part there's the door run out as fast as you can All right, so if you're kind of like to this part of the video you decide to stick around cool thanks a lot so as you can see here we're going to go back to the PC part of things I'm going to explain a few things uh, that I learned and this whole RGB, ARGB controlling systems and hubs and everything else is new to me. I've never worked with a, uh, a gaming PC that has a lot of flashy lights and shit like that to it. Now, old school wise, you know, we used to have what was called cool glow or underglow for vehicles, which were neon tubes in a tube, and you would mount them underneath your vehicle. And later on, they came out with LEDs to where you basically, the same thing, control the LEDs to whatever you want them to do. Uh, also, for motorcycle, they have systems like that, too. Now, I've installed a lot of that, and I like that. I like the way that the, the lighting effect is and stuff. For PCs, I really didn't care for it because PCs back in the day didn't have windows on them. They didn't have uh, an area where you can actually see the inside of the PC. And then with these gaming systems now, I kind of looked at a few things and was like, you know, this actually looks kind of cool. So I want to fix mine. ASRock or ASRock, which is the motherboard that I have, uh, has problems with a program called Polychrome. Now, 
I looked up my motherboard online and tried to find either a uh, new program or driver or something for that. And no, they haven't came out with one to, for my motherboard. So that's telling me either my motherboard is really old and I need to get a new one or fix what I already have and find a way to fix it. So I kind of found a way to fix what I already have. So I had a problem with the CPU cooler and the pump you know, was making some noises, plus the brackets broke, the plastic brackets for the pump go, because I have a um, uh, AMD. So I went and I picked up a ML240L, which is made by Cooler Master, and that's got a four pin plug on it for the pump itself to plug into the motherboard for your lighting to work right with it. And Polychrome was very limited on that port for four pins to control the lighting and stuff. When I had the fans doing one thing, because they're a three pin, and the CPU cooler LEDs were kind of doing another, which I didn't really care for. So I went out and I picked up this one here. So it's the same thing as the Cooler Master, but this is the ML240 Illusion, which has a three pin, plus it comes with a controller for your LEDs, and I'll get into that in a bit. This one here, it kind of uh, matches a lot more of the system case and what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it with all the settings that I have and different types of directions that I can set the lighting to be also customize it to how I want it with each individual uh, light on each fan or CPU or whatever. Now, I bought the memory that has the LED effects with it as well. Now, luckily, I was able to work out that problem. Uh, Polychrome really didn't work very well with it until I end up downloading, which I'll get into that later on, the program for that. So one of the things you got to think about when you're wanting to play around with the RGB or ARGB, which addressable ARGB or RGBs, um, is the difference between a hub and an actual controller. Okay, now a lot of these manufacturers that make these hubs will call them controllers and they're actually not. All they are is a powered pass-through. Okay, you have power going in here. Basically, it's a ribbon from your hard drive for your power. You plug it into this side. And in this side here, it comes from your motherboard's three-pin uh, RGB or ARGBs, plugs into here. And then you have all these are outputs to your devices that light up have leds inside it doesn't matter if it's a strip doesn't matter if it's a fan doesn't matter whatever you got going on with your pc that you want to control as long as it's a three pin on it so like i said this is a hub it's a powered pass through all right this here is an actual controller now i've got two of these because the cooling fans that i picked up the three pairs uh came with a controller exactly like this one and so did the cpu cooler that i've just picked up now so i've got the old cpu cooler in the box this is going to be going in the box with it just to keep it for storage but this is kind of nice so i end up picking up a bunch of actually i got a deal on these where they're by master cooler as well and these are five prongs and i also got a bunch of four prongs now the five prongs i ended up they're going to be stored away just Hold on to those for later. But these um, outputs or channels, if you want to call them, there's three channels on the side of this. Each one of them, each one of them can control four things. So if you have four fans, you could plug them all into one with the Y adapter. If you have a CPU fan and something else, you could plug it in here and so on and so on. As long as you go up to four things on each channel, that's fine. Anything over is not going to work correctly. Anything under will be just fine. So if you got a three 
uh, three adapter for this, it'll work just fine. On the other side of things, you have a comes with a power cable that plugs in here, and also connects to the ribbon cable that plugs into your hard drive, and it has a USB. So if you have a USB header that is being used, unuse it if you want to use this. And this also has a magnet built into the back over here, so if you want to stick it to the system case, it ain't going nowhere. And it's strong enough to withhandle uh, vibration as well, even though your PC shouldn't be vibrating. It has some rubber feet on there to where it, when it gets where it's at, it ain't moving around. If you lay it down, it ain't really moving around. Now, this has a program that goes with it that beats the hell out of polychrome. And... Uh, yeah, so let's get over to the PC side of things so I can show you how this works and the issues that I came across with Polychrome that a lot of other people, I guess, were having too. So now we're on the PC side of things and this is for Polychrome. In order to get it to work correctly or somewhat work correctly, so if you have an ASRock motherboard and you want to be able to fix polychrome or if you have polychrome installed on a another motherboard because i guess they use it on a variety of motherboards um some motherboards come with their own software that is a much better than polychrome um but polychrome seems to be one of the asrock's choice to use so you go to program files okay it'll be under this pc which used to be called my computer now it's called this pc go into your c drive and then go to where i have it highlighted for program files x86 click on that and you'll see right here it says asrock or asrock utilities click on that now here is the folder for polychrome click on that uh, you'll see all these folders you don't want to be in this right here is an uninstall so if you wanted to uninstall the program what you want to concentrate on is this bin folder here now here is the executable that will start polychrome and show up on your screen and then go into the program to where you can make your adjustments if you would like to if it's working correctly so down here this WICP flash ADSB is the program or the flashing of a chip, uh, whatever that file is. So you want to click that first, and what that's going to do is going to open up kind of like a window, it looks like CMOS, uh, and it's going to open it and close it right away. There's really nothing to look at nothing to really be impressed by it'll go away pretty quick almost a blink of an eye but you want to concentrate down to this file right here which is the right FW when you click that what it's going to do is erase the chip that is controlling all of your RGB or ARGB lighting and then reflash the program back to that chip and then it's going to run through a test mine comes up as failing okay and for some reason it just it, it doesn't like it I don't know why I couldn't figure it out I had it working for a little while and then I started getting some errors uh, then I tried to reflash it again and wipe it and reflash it and it ended up coming up where uh, I started getting a error all the time so I ended up basically uninstalling it and getting rid of polychrome what was supposed to be a fix really isn't so there are other programs that you can use as long as they're compatible with the motherboard that you have for controlling the lighting systems that you have on your motherboard or PC, but you will have to check out to see if these programs would be compatible for the motherboard that you have. Now I could have went this route, but I kind of looked up each one of them, really didn't like what I saw as far as the pros and cons go. Of course they have uh, ASRock or ASRock Polychrome Sync on here as well with Chrome uh, Razor Chroma which is also part of Polychrome now. So you do have a choice but you kind of have to hunt down the comp compatibility if it's going to work or not. So let's get into the uh, memory as far as being able to control that because that's totally separate from the Cooler Master program. Alright, so we're back at the computer side of things. So the memory brand name that I have is G-Skill and it's DDR4. I got four cards inside there. So let's get to the program 
for controlling the LEDs and the effects of the LEDs. So the program is pretty basic. It's not really, really flashy as far as looks go, uh, but it gets right to the point as far as what you want it to do. On the side over here, you could sync all four of them, and or you can do each individual as far as the customizing goes. Now I have mine synced as all four, so they're all doing the same thing. You also have a scroll over here to where you have quite a bit of a choice as far as what you want the LEDs to do. Um, you can choose the color of the LEDs. Right now I have mine set kind of close to where the system case is set to as far as color goes. You could change the speed on them and the brightness on it. Now there's really not too much uh, as far as operation goes. Um, it does have an external sync so if you end up having some type of uh, a keyboard or something too or something else made by G-Skill um, you can also sync that up as well. You could sync it up with your music and you can just turn off the LEDs and of course I have mine set to English. Now there's really not too much as far as settings go. You are able to, uh, like right now this is running in the background so if I go here and I go to settings it, that's all it does is that's it. There's not much as far as anything else. Pick whatever you want, hit apply. If you don't like it you can actually just go and change it and hit apply again or if you don't like it overall you can hit reset that's right here and start from scratch all over again. So this is kind of where I have mine set up right now to sort of match the color of the system case. So let's get into Master Plus. This is by Cooler Master program. I click on that. And it's going to start off just like this and kind of show you a little bit of a splash screen and then uh, make sure it's going to everything is installed the way it's supposed to and it reads everything. Now this is kind of nice because it has where it reads the temperature of your CPU, the usage, temp of your GPU, the usage, voltage of your CPU, and voltage of your GPU. So you can kind of monitor things a little bit and see what's going on. So right now, if I click on the LED controller, this is what it looks like. Now I have mine set for, uh, what is this, Ref refile, refill, something like that. I can't have my glasses with me right now. But again, you know, you can kind of see there is a color wheel here. You can change to a custom color. I've got mine set to this color right here. You could click it on random. It'll go through uh, random things, uh, random colors. Uh, you can also set a speed of how fast you want it to go through those. It does have a reset and it does have an apply. So anytime you do something, you want to hit apply, and that applies the changes to your LEDs that you've made. Another thing that's kind of nice about this is if we go to setup here, now you could see some differences here compared to what uh, Polychrome had. Polychrome really didn't give you an option to set up each LED system individually. This does. So as you see there is on channel 1, it's not showing anything on channel 1 because it's not considered a uh, Gen 2 ARGB. Uh, it's basically a couple of light strips that I end up in there putting in there. It does recognize it and it does work, but it doesn't recognize it as anything like a fan or something. So it just shows up as channel one. So I have something plugged in. So you want to uncheck or unhighlight this box here and just choose other. You may have to change the LEDs, uh, the amount of them. It does not auto uh, detect basically what how many LEDs are in those strips. So half of the strip may light up. By default it says eight. So you're going to have to change that. So I have approximately about 30 LEDs and that gives me the effect, full effect of the whole LED strip instead of eight where it only gave me a partial effect of that. Now when you go to channel two, I've got three things plugged into there. Go to channel three and you can see I got four things plugged into there. And this is basically cooling fan CPU, which is the two cooling fans and the CPU, the pump LEDs, and then these are all fans as well. Now another thing that I have on there is a bracket that kind of holds, uh, it holds the GPU, 
the video card to where it's not sagging a little bit but it has a mind of its own its own and I'll show you that in a little bit now another thing that's kind of cool is you got other things you can get into here so not only as the overall shows you the temperatures and voltages you can go to system lighting here you could change things around inside of here you can customize channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 and channel 4 I mean sorry these are these are four channels uh, but on the ports 1 ports 2 and ports 3 so you got port 1 that has one thing inside of it that's not detecting then you got port 2 that is showing what is on port 2 and then you got port 3 that's showing 4 and you can actually change or customize the channel along with different types of um, I guess music it'll play music and the lights will interact with that as well uh, settings you can change as much as you want it gives a default here but you can actually customize that to whatever you want as well so I'm not making any changes to this and then you also have uh, screen follow where it's this is another thing that plays some type of music and you can interact with your keyboard your mouse and if you got a headphone stand it's got LEDs as well um, there's also a follower 2.0 which I don't use and then the lighting uh, maker which goes back to this this is configuration well it's already configured to the LED controller a1 profiles you could set up power modes which is nothing plugged into for power modes and then you control hubs which is also for uh, any other keyboard mouse and shit like that so we go back here now the one thing that's kind of cool about this is go back to the LEG um, AR, uh, ARGB lighting system now when you go to custom this is kind of cool and this is kind of nice now it shows you if you go to custom you can pick and choose how you want your LEDs to work now if you go to overplay this is kind of cool this gives you pretty much the same options now here's channel 1 then channel 2 you have 1 to 3 then channel 3 you have 1 to 4 and these are the sections of the timeline when it switches over so if you want say uh, channel 1 to be something as far as a customization goes well you can pick static reload uh, breathing you know, turn it off if you want to and it'll play for I think five seconds that that uh, uh, setting and then you can go to here and set the same thing or have it do something different for each five seconds that the light is on and it'll kind of um, recycle itself back to the beginning and start over again and you can also customize the colors of how you want it as well each channel does this so you can have your fans doing uh, something totally different than your CPU cooler you can have uh, LED strips do something different than what your fans are doing uh, color wise also I mean it just it's, it's unbelievable as far as what uh, this thing can do and then just apply the settings and you're good to go now you click on one of these and here it will show you basically what's going on and if you click on each one of these you can individually do something with them uh, as far as the way to the pattern you can skip LEDs if you wanted to or have the full thing hit apply and you're good to go now I'm not going to hit apply or anything because I don't want to change what I already have everything I have going on right now is right where I want it and that's that so let's kind of get to looking at what the system case looks like right now because I've added a few things and changed a few things all right so here is my system case pretty much lit up in the front you can see I got two light strips going on one going in one direction and one going in the other and that's kind of done on purpose I have one where the plugs at the bottom and the other where the plugs at the top and you can kind of see that when they light up they light up evenly going on both sides well, that's part of the uh, program to where you have to type in how many LEDs are total in that light strip in order for it to work properly so I'm going to turn the lights back on a little bit of a closer view of it 
and you kind of see what the fans are doing. I got everything pretty much the same color. Now the funny thing is, when you go on an angle, the colors look different, and you go on another angle, the colors look different, but they're all lighting up the same color. So let's go inside of the system case. All right, so at the bottom over there under the GPU, you kind of see uh, another bar that's lighting up. It kind of has a mind of its own. It doesn't sync up with the um, program very well. And I found out that while well, this bar kind of sucks two different ways, one, it sags still because it's mounted in the back where you have your screws to mount whatever uh, hardware you're putting inside your computer and it just doesn't support the GPU the way it's supposed to and you can kind of see I have my fans all going the same way let me see if I can get inside there fans are all going the same way I got the memory lighting up pretty much close to the way I want it I've got the uh, CPU cooler pump lighting up along with everything else and then the inside over here, I got a strip going up and down in the corner. And behind that bar that's lighting up that I said doesn't really work very well. Uh, there's also a strip behind that that's lighting up the board behind or underneath the GPU. So I've got a new support coming for the GPU uh, that is going to actually support the GPU so it doesn't sag. It's pretty heavy. And uh, yeah, so with this set up the way it is right now, I can actually change each individual fan to whatever I want it to do. Now, the one thing you do have a compatib compatibility issue with what types of fans that you're using. These fans are all made by uh, Cooler Master, so and I believe there's kind of like a handful of fans that actually work with this controller and uh, different brand names. So yeah, it's not bad. I, I kind of like it. I mean, even though you can't really see it too well being in the corner over here, but I like the way it turned out. Everything seems to look and operate the way that I want it to, and it's been steady. There hasn't been no problems, no issues, no complications. Everything's been working just how I want it. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around. Take it easy.